I changed the setup a little bit from the last video. I turned it back into a one-to-many relationship. A playlist has many videos, and each video has one playlist. This is the default. You know I don't need to override the on-model creating. We've seen that in previous videos. And look, I have my playlist, but you can see in the playlist I do not add my good video that I have up here. I took that out. So the playlist is independent of the good video, and the good video is independent of the playlist. To get the good video into the database, though, I had to go as far as saying, hey, add the good video to my videos inside of my context. Because the video is no longer the playlist, the entity framework will find it via the playlist. I'll build this, run this, let it run to completion. We'll go look at what happens in SQL Server. Hopefully this is old hat. I refresh over here. You can see that here's the video and the way that it keeps track of its one playlist it can be in is via the playlist ID right here. This is the one to many relationship we've seen before. But notice the playlist ID is null here. Null meaning this video does not belong to a playlist, which is maybe what you want, but maybe you want all videos to belong to a playlist. All videos belong to only one playlist, but all videos must belong to a playlist. There's a couple ways to configure that. One is by slamming some data annotations on your entity types. So here we can say a video has a playlist, and oh, by the way, that is required. Okay, I'm not getting any IntelliSense support here. I have to type the entire required there for the attribute. If you don't understand how .NET attributes work, go look at my .NET attributes videos. I just show those in great detail in there. Control dot using system.component.data annotations. Okay, it makes you wonder what else is in this namespace. We'll take a look and as the future as the videos progress. But now I have annotated this this playlist but this my list property and I said hey this is required so now when I run this control F5 build this run this we get a big fat exception in our face saying hey uh, DB entity validation exception validation failed for one or more entities see entity validation errors property for more details so say you get this error and, and you know oh, did, that, did I break one of my validations did I break one of the rules how do I do that let me uh, how do I figure out what went wrong? I mean, let me run this with the debugger. I'll F5 and come down here and say, oh, okay, well, obviously I get the exception. Let's view the detail via the exception window. And uh, this is big and ugly. It said to look at the entity validation errors. So I'll hit this arrow. And you can see the debugger stops helping us. At that point, it's like, oh. Oh, I, I don't know what I validated or invalidated, right? I don't know what I broke. So now I'm forced to say, all right, we'll try catch, which is probably good to catch errors, especially ones that could possibly happen. What is it? DB entity validation error? Is that, is that what it was? I, I, see, look, I'm, I'm just not getting much help here. Control KC. Let me have five that again. This is such a pain, and, and the reason why I'm doing this is to illustrate how much of a pain some of these APIs can be to deal with. Generally, .NET, it's pretty smooth, pretty easy, but uh, in this case, it's a pain in the neck. DB entity validation exception. All right, DB, let me bring this in. DB entity validation well, I almost had it. Exception. I have to type the whole thing because IntelliSense is not helping me because I don't have the using for it. Again, I think the Entity Framework team is a little bit too excited about their namespaces. Control dot using system dot entity dot validation. Uh, I'll call this error. And then let's let's look at let's look at what's in this thing. I wanna I wanna see what I did. I wanna see what I screwed up and. It looks like, oh, it has entity validation errors. That's exactly what it said to look at. And it's an I enumerable of DB entity validation result. I'm going to copy this. And I guess I could have many validation errors. I know I only have one in this case, but it's possible to have many. Uh, I'll say validation result in error dot entity validation errors. And then what does validation result give us? Validation result dot validation errors entries is valid okay go figure i'm going to guess the validation errors what is this thing f12 validation errors should be the right way to go oh i collection <laughs> not i enumerable that's funny they had an i enumerable here but now it's an i collection here and you know how i feel about i collection it's kind of a wasted uh, interface in my opinion but 
Uh, maybe my opinion doesn't count. It's I collection of what? DB validation error. DB validation error. Error. Oh, wait, I already have an error here. I guess. Look how deep I gotta go to figure out what the heck I really screwed up here. Console right line. ASDF dot uh, property name and error message. Let's try error message. Whew. Control F. Oh, I forgot my in. For each blah 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 in. Control F5. Build that, run that, let it run. The my list field is required. Thank you. Okay, now if this was a big complex project with all these restrictions on my schema, then I would really like to know the error message. That would make my life easy. But instead, I got to dig down deep. And this is kind of, I can see why they did this. They're trying to keep it clean, trying to keep it organized. Good. But dang, that's just a lot of work to get the validation. Error. Anyway, you can throw this attribute on top of the property here, the mapping property, and that makes it required. However, now I feel like I'm polluting my entity types with all these data annotations. I wonder if there's another way to do this. Of course there is, otherwise I wouldn't be hinting that way. We can use that Fluent API again on model creating, and I can say model builder. Hey, let's talk about the entity video. And... It has required v v dot playlist. Or I guess I call it my list. My list. All right. Now I'm saying, hey, the video entity has a required property called my list. I no longer have to say required here. I can keep these things clean and keep my model descriptions down here. I don't have to wrap my model descriptions in here and then sometimes over here. There's a lot of things you can do in here that are hard, really hard to describe over here so it's up to you it's personal preference I kind of like to keep it down here keep it separated separate concerns and of course we get another error oh wow <laughs> look at that we get a different error this time <laughs> why why did you guys do this to me can't we be a little bit consistent oh and now I'm, I'm getting beeps from my computer Whatever, it finally went away. Uh, uh let's let's F ten on this. Let's let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. F ten, add the playlist, add a video, try to save the changes. Get an entirely different type of exception than I did with the required attribute. DB update exception. Entities in videos participate in my list relationship. Zero related were found. One Video target. It's, it's complaining because I didn't put the video in the playlist there. I'll even prove to you if I put my good video inside of the playlist. We won't get any exceptions. It'll run just fine. There won't be any, any errors. It runs to completion. That's great. But if I take it out of here, then I get an error. And depending on which way I say it's required, I'm going to get a different type of error. That's frustrating. I think that's inconsistent. That's disappointing. And I'm not going to pick through this exception and and figure oh there's an inner exception this time update exception uh, somewhere in here is the information of what I screwed up and some some one of the constraints but I do want to show you in SQL Server either way we said that the my list is required I can say it down here I can say it using the data annotation as I did before uh, but more importantly over in the database let's look at our database if I look at the videos playlist First of all, I can refresh this. There's no data in there because we failed to commit our data. Our transaction failed because the video wasn't part of the playlist. But if I go here and say design, you can see that my list ID inside of my videos table no longer allows nulls. No longer allows nulls because I said it was required. Down here, that relationship is required. Anyway, sorry I'm just so exasperated about the API here, but I mean, the entity framework itself and a lot of .NET APIs are difficult or hard enough to learn as they're, they're big, they're complex, and then all of a sudden I get inconsistent errors and I gotta write code like this depending on whether it was, ah!